layer of rock that starts at the top of Cape Town's Table Mountain and stretches 100 miles inland. A major fossil bed was unearthed here, called the Sum Shale. And just like the Burgess Shale 80 million years previously, it held a complete snapshot of life on Earth. Simon Brady has come to South Africa to see the evidence for the next stage in the evolutionary arms race. He is joined by geologist Hannes Tron, who made the single most important discovery here. Teeth, some of the earliest on Earth, our first weapons in the war for world domination. They belong to an animal called a conodont, a descendant of Bacaya. At 15 inches, the conodonts were 10 times bigger than their feeble ancestor. And with their new armory, they could finally stand up to their old enemy, the arthropods. It seemed the evolutionary tables had turned, or had they? Because this bug wasn't killed by a conodont. The conodonts don't represent actual true predators, they're scavengers, so they, they feed on dead carcasses of animals which are just littering around in the environment. So the vertebrates haven't made that breakthrough yet in the evolutionary arms race of becoming predators. So if we weren't doing the killing, who was? There was a new alien presence in the seas. The evidence came in the form of these strange conical shells. Three times bigger than a conodont, they are the remains of an animal called a nautiloid, the earliest ancestor of the modern squid. In a world of conventional warfare, this was the first weapon of mass destruction. This is a modern squid, highly intelligent and ruthless. It is using the same killing techniques pioneered by its ancestors. Hidden inside the powerful arms, a rasping beak that could make mincemeat of any prey. In the conflict between the nautiloids and the conodonts, it was no contest. Victory went to the new stealth weapon, the jet-powered torpedo of the deep. And just when things were starting to look up. 80 million years of evolution since the Burgess Shale had put us in a position to overtake the bugs only to find that we'd been overtaken by the snails. These super snails had not only joined the arms race, they'd gone straight into the lead. And the fossil record shows that they were set to stay on top for another 50 million years. If we were ever going to rise to dominance, something would have to break the super snails' grip on power. Four hundred and forty million years ago, suddenly, and quite literally out of the blue, we got lucky. It's ironic, but the thing that ultimately came to save us nearly killed us in the process. A vast and overwhelming natural disaster struck the Earth. Just a few miles from the Sum Shale, Hannes Tron has taken Simon to see a section of bare rock which looks like a plowed field. But it's evidence, Hannes believes, for a global catastrophe, a mega ice age. We have the glacial floor here. Some agent must have created these deep indentations, gouges and striations. So in the process of moving across this partly consolidated, soft sort of sediment still, it made scratches and it made hollows and it pushed all sorts of rocks and pieces across it. Now the only agency by which all these things come together is that it must have been in a glacial setting. The Ice Age was so intense, 
It covered most of the planet with a solid sheet of death half a mile thick. It was an agonizing way to die, slow and gradual at first as the temperature started to drop. The ice built up over more and more of the ocean surface and darkness descended on the world below. Without sunlight, the plants died, the food chain was broken, starvation set in. And when the big thaw came, things got even worse. Melting fresh water polluted the sea, poisoning the marine animals. It was a mass extinction, like the apocalypse that removed the dinosaurs, but many times bigger. A quarter of all life died in this icy holocaust. Our survival hung in the balance. Any mass extinction can be thought of as when life was on a knife edge. It's a critical moment where the course of evolution could be changed and depending on how organisms cope with that mass extinction, how they're able to adapt and diversify after that extinction will drive the course of subsequent evolution for 50, 100 million years. The evolutionary arms race was turned on its head. The big losers were the mollusks. 80% of nautiloids disappeared, while the bugs got off lightly. And we just about hung on. It raises a critical question. If a global catastrophe hits every animal on Earth, why do some survive when most perish? How did we manage to escape the big freeze? The answer could lie here, in an ancient forest near Cape Town. There's a piece of living evidence that may help explain how we survived this natural disaster. In the Newlands Forest lives a creature that has survived every mass extinction on Earth. It has come through nearly 500 million years of existence, barely unchanged. It is a surviving remnant of the Burgess Shale, a living fossil. Simon has called on the help of bug expert Mike Picker to track down this elusive creature called Peripetus. Okay, nothing in that one. No luck. Try another one. He knows they keep a very low profile, hiding away in dark, damp corners like rotting logs, and only coming out to feed at night. Oh, wow. There you go. Nice big one as well. Now, as you can see, it's a completely rotting log. Peripetus is the ultimate survivor. So it's not disturbing. It is absolutely amazing that these things are so simple and yet, in evolutionary terms, so effective. Simon believes they've survived so long because they were small and could hide in protected spaces less affected by a changing environment. But their big advantage was being at the bottom of the food chain. Back at the time of the Sum Shale, the nautiloids were the big specialist predators at the very top of the food chain. When the world changed, their high protein food supply dried up. Whenever you have a large